Asbury Brewer Alumni Stadium tonight. The Jasper Wildcats back home again in the county rivalry matchup against the Southridge Raiders. So Jasper coming into this football game after their initial win last week, 28-14 over the Evansville Memorial Tigers. And Southridge defeated Corydon Central to start their season off 1-0 at with a win, 28 to nothing. Hello, everybody. I'm Craig Schneider, along with Mike Blessinger. And uh, tonight, this Jasper Wildcat football team, after last week, was kind of the tale of two halves when you look at uh, how the football team played. First half, team kind of trying to find themselves. And then, Bless, I think at halftime, just making some adjustments and uh, some changes to the game plan. And I think they did find themselves in the second half last week. Yeah, there's definitely two different halves. And... Uh you know, Jasper had a tough start. I think a couple penalties and a little bit of momentum went the wrong way. They couldn't get things going when it came out, got the ball in the second half. They took it and uh, just went back to the old Jasper football. Let's just go right at them with the big running game. And uh, the line did a great job. The backs were running hard, and we just took it to them. And then the defense reacted to that as well after some adjustments and really held to uh, Memorial to three and outs, I think, three or four times. They, Barely had three minutes of uh, possession. So it'll be exciting to see how Jasper reacts after that. Obviously, they really feel confident with the running game and the way they did that. And uh, let's see if we can get that passing game going a little bit tonight against uh, you know, a pretty solid Southridge team. Well, and here's the thing. I mean, as far as these two football teams, we mentioned as far as the Wildcats really finding themselves as far as the rushing game last week, and they rushed for uh, 276 yards in that game with 53 carries. But they're taking on a Southridge team tonight that pretty well wants to do the same thing. Now, you're going to see two different styles of offense as far as the formations and all that. The Wildcats, of course, in their uh, familiar I formation that we'll probably mostly see here to start things off. But then you've got Southridge with more of their wing T set up. But, uh, you know, last week, 58 rushes for 378 yards. So, you know, again, the Southridge team is, you know, pretty well solid, just like we expect every year out of them. Yeah, and they'll, they'll come right at you. It's a familiar offense to all these kids. They've been running it for years. And, uh, you know, they, they barely threw the ball last week, so we'll see if that changes any. And uh, Jasper certainly doesn't expect them to. Jasper prepared for a running attack. And, uh, you know, so their defense is going to have to get aggressive. But Southridge certainly, you know, they're going to come at you. And, you know, the, the real key here, it's a warm night. It's, it's early, late summer. Uh, I think both teams had a little um, challenge with the heat and getting some cramps going. So... You know, let's see how after a week of uh, preparation and a little game game conditioning, if, uh, if that's changed at all. But one thing I know Jasper was really working on, certainly in the second half and throughout the second half, was building depth in their linemen and their running backs and mixing guys in and, he, and even on defense. And uh, if there's one real big advantage that Jasper has, and a lot of it has to do with just being a bigger school, uh, is they just have more depth. And that's the challenge that Southridge faces every time we play, they play Jasper, is they just don't have the same amount of depth that uh, that Jasper has. Yeah, and that's the thing. You'll see a number of guys go both ways for the Raiders. But, uh, you know, we talked about their rushing attack, and they were actually led by Mitchell Mundy, number nine. You'll see him out there on the field tonight. He had 23 carries for 136 yards. O'Brien with only 11 carries, but, boy, he really made him pay off with 129 yards in his game and then uh, also you've got number 34 Ross Eckert who's in hell of a running back as well he had 10 carries for 88 yards so again you're talking about a three-headed monster when you look at that wing T formation and all three of them are very good backs yeah they are they're they're active and of course the linemen are, are going to uh, be solid up front and the, the way you prevent that wing T is you get penetration at the defensive line and then the chase with the linebackers and the defensive setup that the Wildcats are going with this week. I talked to Coach Eckert earlier in the week. He, they really want to just jam it, jam it all in there uh, at the box and just make them try and beat us deep. So we'll we'll end up probably with two, two defensive backs and nine in the box and uh, and just challenge them to try and beat us up front or or go deep. Well, the quarterbacks for these two football teams, you've got the Jasper Wildcats with Justin Gable, number 16. Uh, last week was three of 11 for passing 80 yards, uh, 61 of those coming in the uh, touchdown play uh, with uh, Grant Teal where he threw long to him. And uh, so that was actually, uh, I believe, the only score the Wildcats had in the first half. That's right. They were down 14-8 to eight, uh, at halftime of that game. But then the Southridge Raiders, uh, their quarterback, 
He is number seven. That's uh, Gage Fetter, and he's a 6'2 senior, 165-pound quarterback. Only threw three times last week, did not complete any. But, again, I guarantee it's something that they worked on this week. So, you know, we, we look for him to really run the ball quite a bit, but I'm sure they'll be sneaking some pass plays in there as well. Yeah, and I'm sure as much as they ran the ball last week, what one thing, I mean, football these days just ha is more than running the ball. You certainly want to establish it, but you need to mix it up. And it'll be good to see how both these teams react to, to what was not uh, a good start in our passing game in, in week one uh, and just see, see how they react. Some of it, you know, for Jasper last week, I know, you know, they were trying to establish a running game. It's just a, a couple of penalties, uh, you know, a couple of busted plays or a fumble here and there, which didn't really cost them the ball and turnover-wise, but it just put them in a bad situation. And then that puts too much pressure on, you know, a quarterback that's in his first game, really thrown less than, I mean, he had two varsity passes, which could not have been in any significant time. Right. So, uh, you know, that, that was a big challenge. And so we'll see how they react to that. Well, that's one thing is that the Wildcats also had to make some adjustments defensively in that second half because uh, the Memorial quarterback, Durkholz, had a heck of a game in the first half. He actually uh, had a good chunk of his 220 yards in that first half, so I'm sure that the Raiders saw that film and will try to make some adjustments in their passing game, as we mentioned. So Jasper kicks off to the Southridge Raiders, kicks it to the end zone, so a nice boot there by Kruger, and that's where the Southridge, will, Southridge Raiders will start First and 10 from the 20-yard line. And what a great advantage to be able to just kick it in the end zone and take it, the ball out of the hands of any dangerous players because generally whoever's back there receiving those kicks off, kickoffs are good athletes. So uh, when Cal boots it in the end zone, that's a good start for, uh, for the Wildcats. So for the most part, Southridge will be under center with their quarterback. So Gage Fetter. Two backs in the backfield, one wing set up on the left side and a split fan to our near side. And the give is to number four, Nolan O'Brien. Brian's able to get past the 25-yard line to about the 26, so we'll call it a gain of six on their first play. Pretty good first down play there. Moving over the left edge. So number 75, Victor Alleman with the play there defensively from his defensive tackle spot. Second down and four, 11-29 on the clock, just underway here. Jerry Brewer Alumni Stadium. There go the Raiders throwing early, and nice pass. Looked like it was on the money, but falls incomplete. Yeah, that, that one was uh, on the receiver. He just dropped that one. That was a nice play. So Christian Butler gets the... First pass play going his way, not able to gather it in. So the Raiders now facing third and four, still at the 26-yard line. Stops the clock at 11:23. Good to see the Raiders though trying to trying to do work in the passing game a little bit. Now they're uh, stacked in there pretty good. Handoff this time to the right side. I think he may have gained enough there for the first down. That's Mitchell Mundy who had the football, number 30. I think he had to get over the 30s just right at it, so it's going to be fourth down. So he's right on the line up. They're actually waving the sticks over, oh, wow. so it's a first and 10 for the Southridge Raiders. So 10 quick yards and three plays, and actually a little equipment timeout there. Yeah, I think I misspoke because the, the angle of the way the, the chains are, they're off the line of the end line, so it looked like he had to get past that. But you know, if you get to the 30 and you start on the 20, that's a first down. So, so the front line for the Southridge Raiders, you got Harkey at center, Songer and Oxley are the guards, and Gerber and Mitchell are the tackles. You'll see a mix in tight ends with uh, number 45, Meyer, and number 80, Carter. You'll see Treader and also we mentioned Motler out there as far as wide receivers, and there's a quick pitch to the Left side on a screen play there, and Wildcats quickly converged. Could not see who made the play on that defensively for the Wildcats are blessed. I think Nick Day was out there and uh, Ben Moonby. Nick Day uh, starting a linebacker tonight as they mix in more linebackers and fewer defensive backs. Nick had a nice uh, nice game last week. as his uh, real first significant time as a varsity player. Completes that play to Shank. That's number eight, Tucker Shank. Just a freshman for the Raiders, 5'10", 162. 
They give it to Mundy on the left side as they fake to the man in motion there. So Mundy looks like he's going to gain about oh, maybe a couple yards on that play, get across the 35. Raiders now facing a third and five. But uh, defensively, I know that obviously uh, with your son Tate Blessinger giving you kind of the uh, scouting report and all that, how do the field, Wildcats feel coming into this football game defensively, Bless? Well, they feel pretty solid. You know, we bring back a lot of guys from last week, and they, they had a good effort in the second half and and just uh, felt like if we got good penetration and and in that case, if their quarterback throws it right to our guy, that's pretty easy. And we will absolutely take that as Ben, ben Winhold picks it off and nice, uh, nice field position to start with. So the Wildcats will take over on the turnover there and Ball actually right about where it started there at the 36-yard line. So the Wildcats will start off with their first possession with 9.26 to go here in the first quarter. No score yet. Really Man. tilted the field there by that turnover uh, inside the 40-yard line. The Cats are starting off with a great spot here. Gable under center. He pitches to Blessinger. Blessinger straight up off tackle there and not much there as number of Raiders were able to make the stop there, and including number 56 from his linebacker spot. That's Oxley who came up, helped make the stop along with Mitchell, number 54. So of course, Tate Blessinger with a huge game to open up the season last week, 148 yards, two touchdowns. Single back this time with yeah, twins. Formation. Are, actually, trips, trips that are on your side, yeah. On the left side. Quick pass out there, Grant Till. We talk about him being a playmaker and getting into his hands. What better way than just a quick pass up the middle? And he gets the ball down to about the 21-yard line as we're going to spot it. So a gain of about 12 on the play. First and 10 for the Cats, bless. That was a nice little play, simple pass. Uh, they, they had good coverage uh, to take advantage of. Grant just hitting the seam there and able to deliver it and get a little 12-yard gain. So first and 10 for the Wildcats, 8.29 to go here in the first quarter. Give us to Kruger, comes in at the tailback spot. He had a number of carries last week, did a great job. Scored a touchdown. Kruger gets it down to about the 17-yard line, we'll call it, gain of four. Yeah, they're in the wishbone here uh, as we get a little closer, or they were in that formation. Now we're going trips right. So the Wildcats mixing up their formations here. We've seen the eye backfield. Now with the single back, trips to the opposite side this time with the split to our near. Gable straight back this time. Tries to set up the Notre Dame screen. He finds Grant Teal across the middle. He gets across the five, down to about the three, maybe two yard line. But not before he's brought down by Federer, number seven. So a nice play for the Wildcats. Two times they get it to number nine there, Bless. Yeah, really, uh, and, and Justin did a good job of being patient. There wasn't much pressure. That play's got to develop, and uh, he waited patiently and uh, hit Grant right where he needed to, and now we're in the bone here at the three-yard line. Let's see if we can punch it in. 14 yards on the pickup. First and goal from the three. Try to draw the Raiders off sides. Whistles do blow and a flag flies and look like the Cats held their own. So it is an offsides on the Southridge Raiders. So a nice job by the offensive line there. First and goal now to one. So now first and goal at about the one and a half yard line, we'll call it. Yeah, now it's up to the offensive line just to shove them backward and, uh, and let our backs take it in. This should be, uh, it's pretty hard to stop the Cats whenever we get at this point. Double tight end set up with the wishbone backfield. Gable under center. Gives to Kruger. He jumps over the top, gets across the goal line, and he scores for the Wildcats' first touchdown of the night. Jasper leads six to nothing. So Wildcats get the turnover with the win hold interception and just march right down about 36 yards for the score there, Bless. Yeah, really nice, uh, you know, a couple of running plays, but really nice passing game to Grant Teal, a guy we definitely have to get the ball to. And uh, Kruger finished it off with a nice little run there to, to put us up early. So again, Jasper with 7.09 to go here in the first quarter, leads this football game six to nothing. 
Cats still kind of doing the same thing they did last week as far as setting up their line. And then, well, they're actually going to run the option this time like they did last week. Get it to Kruger. And he is met right there at the five-yard line. So it does not work for the Cats this time. So Jasper leads the Southridge Raiders 6 to nothing with 7.09 to go here in the first quarter. You're watching the Jasper Wildcats and the Southridge Raiders here on 18 WJTS. This is Tony Ubalar inviting you to the final days of our huge 86th anniversary tent sale and cookout this Friday and Saturday at our Ubalar Toyota location on Highway 231 South in Jasper. Our entire inventory of Chevys, Cadillacs, Toyotas, Scion, and pre-owned vehicles are still at this location, and they're all priced to save you money. Enjoy food, snacks, and drinks from 11 to 1 and register to win a free flat screen TV. This Friday and Saturday only at Ubalar Toyota Scion, Highway 231 South in Jasper. Don't miss it. Back once again here at a Jerry Brewer Alumni Stadium, the Jasper Wildcats with their first possession. Get six points on the board. We're not able to convert the second or the, uh, the two-point conversion. Yeah, we're trying to get pretty creative on those PATs, and, the, and there's a read that they make. And on that one, really, Southridge guy just made a nice, uh, a nice man-up tackle on, on Cal on the option. Yeah, it's pretty well whenever you run that, Bless. It's basically man against man because you've got really nobody blocking for you. It's like, you know, can you get them to suck in on Teal? They actually covered that, and, you know, and I guarantee they saw the film, you know, I mean, yeah. as far as uh, that play. So once they see it set up, they've got their guys in place. So, And I think generally speaking, you think, well, if I got Teal and Kruger against two guys, it's probably not a bad thing. Uh, but in that case, it just didn't work. So now we're going to have to get two or, or kick some – kick some points or, or something to make up for that one. So Southridge with their second possession will start from the 20 as Kruger booted in the end zone there. Give right up the middle is to Ross Ecker and he was, finds a nice hole there and was able to gain about nine on the play. Gets it to the 29 yard line. That's a good first down. Good first down run. The linebacker was uh, trying to pull him from behind a little bit and that's usually not a good, good thing whenever you chase him down good running backs. So the Wildcats obviously uh, setting up with a six-man front defensively. Three linebackers and just two defensive backs set up right now. As they get it on the quick move up the middle, Mitchell Mundy with the carry. So he gets plenty for the first down, gets across the 30-yard line to about the 31, maybe 32. We'll call it the 32, so a gain of three on the play. So as far as defensive, we actually see Jack Mitchell now out there, number 64, you, of course, Boone John. Number 55, Brett Hofe, and you know, Carson Englert's out there as well. So, I mean, you know, bless, yeah, we have a number of guys going both ways ourselves. Yeah, we do, and I know that what they're trying to do is a pass. Fetter gets his receiver to break off the pattern there. He looked like he was going long. That's just one of those reads between the quarterback and the receiver is intended for number 89, Matt Treader. But pretty well covered there by Teal. Yeah, Grant was right there to make the play either the tackle or knock it loose. But really, uh, again, uh, Treader, the receiver, that's probably one I think he probably thinks he should have caught. I know uh, everybody else would think so, I think, too. So that'll make it a second and 10. Stops the clock at 6.09 right now. Jasper leads 6 to nothing here in the first quarter. Now, Southridge has already thrown more times than they did all of the game last year or last week. Now, that's that play for the Raiders that works really well against the Wildcats here. Goes for about 12 yards where they hand off to the ball carrier on the right side. Then he hands back to the man coming in motion. So, number eight, Tucker Shank, Tucker Shank with a nice play there. <laughs> so, that gives the Raiders first and ten from the 44-yard line. Shank picks up 12. This time, Mundy gets the ball, and he's got a wide open spot there as the Wildcats missed a few tackles and still cannot bring him down as he gets all the way down across the 20-yard line to about the 19 before Tate Blessinger and also number 30, Nick Day, are able to bring him down, but... Uh, yeah, just a case right there of not very good tackling, Bless. No, we had him bottled up a little bit, and he broke free. And uh, uh, 
just didn't cover the hole. And, and then, like you said, just not real good tackling. So Moody really paused a little bit, trying to make a move on the guys uh, downfield, and Tate was able to chase him down. Uh, that could have been a little bit worse, I think. So a gain of about 37 on that run. So the Southridge Raiders in business right now inside the red zone as Shank, the freshman, runs the football, the left side off tackle, and gets across. I'm trying to see, actually, he was just shy of the... 15-yard line, so they'll spot it at the 16, three-yard gain. Second down and seven at the 16. Tate came charging in from the outside and busted him pretty good, so a freshman will see how he responds to that, I'm sure. Four forty-five to go here in the first quarter. The Raiders moving. He'll jump pass, pop pass right up the middle to number 45. He hauls it in. It's a tight end, Chad Meyer. Trying to see where they spot that football. Might be just shy of the first down. It looks like he is. So the Southridge Raiders on the move looking to tie this football game. Some ball now spotted at the nine. Chad Meyer tight end and I'm sure plays defense. Uh, good athlete, big, big. Young man. Shank gets the football this time, and I think he should have enough for the pick for the uh, first down to get it to just right at the nine, as they were just shy of it. But still not, still not making any indication yet here. No, they're going to actually bring the chains over. Yeah, it's it's hard to tell with the way the chains are. It's going to. I think it's going to be really close. What you were talking about, the defensive line, uh, Jack Heichelbeck, Jack Mitchell Heichelbeck coming in. Um, I know what they're trying to do is uh, keep revolving guys in. I think they were looking at five guys, you know, playing seven guys for five positions and keep moving them in and out to try and keep them fresh. And Southridge uh, does convert on the first down by nose, it looks like. Well, that's the thing. I mean, if you do put six guys on the line, it's great if you're able to stop there. But uh, actually, it's kind of a risky move defensively, and Southridge was able to take advantage of it as Mooney was able to break free for that long run. So the Raiders first in goal from the nine with 3.55 on the clock. Clock moving right now. Still in the first quarter here at Jerry Brewer Alumni Stadium. Jasper against Southridge. Game two for both of these teams this year. And we got single coverage with O'Brien split wide left. And Give up the middles to Ross Eckert, actually on the left side. He gains maybe a yard or two on that play. Second and goal from the seven. Cats obviously in their goal line defense right now. Pretty good uh, first down play for the Wildcats on defense now. Shank gets it, and boy, he is met as he tried to get up the hole. Actually loses his helmet there. and Trying to see, was that Tate on that stop, I believe? Tate popped him pretty good again. We get a little fired up now. See if it turns into some uh, good aggression, or uh, you know, sometimes aggression makes uh, causes you to make some mistakes. So. That was another good play, though. No gain and uh, third and uh, seven. So it could be it's a pretty challenging situation for the Raiders. And we'll see if this is four down territory. If the Raiders not able to convert here on third down to get in the end zone, will they kick it or go for it? Depends on where this play takes them, obviously. So the give is to Mundy. And boy, he has just met again. Tate Blessinger just getting extremely aggressive defensively. So two nice stops for him. He's reading that running back perfectly. Yeah, he, he did a nice job. The, the line did a good job standing in their spots, and Tate just was patient. He didn't move upfield. He knew he needed to plug the hole. He plugged it with the other guys, and they converted. And that was just really, really good defense by the, the linemen and then the linebackers coming up, making the play. So that's a good uh, – now it's fourth and six. And uh, – 
Are they still on the seven? Right. Yeah, I think they're going to actually kick right now. Number 15 has checked into the huddle. That's Jose Ariza, so he's going to line himself up for about a 23-yard field goal, it looks like. 23 yards. So Ariza, left-footed kicker. A pretty good kicker, I think. Here's oh, a snap, the kick it. is up, and he misses it nice wide job. right. Nice job by the Wildcat D. You know, they bend, bend but don't break, and uh, end up coming away with uh, no points for the Raiders, and uh, just a real nice job by the defense after, you know, one big play, and uh, the Southridge was getting a little momentum, and then they stiffened up down there, uh, down there when it got close. So Jasper maintains the 6-0 lead with 1.20 to go here in the first quarter. And as Mike Blessinger was telling you, just an outstanding job defensively after giving up the, the long run play of about 37 yards to set up the Raiders with a great spot in the red zone. They're able to get it inside the 10, but not convert. So Jasper starts second possession. Going with some split backs with Sermi and Tate back there and split. Timeout. So Southridge wants to talk about it, so we'll take a break here and let our sponsors tell you all about it. Jasper, Southridge, here on Friday night. Jasper leads 6 to nothing. You're watching the Wildcats and Raiders here on 18 WJTS. Following the Southridge timeout, Jasper with the football. 6 nothing lead, 120 to go here in the first quarter. After the missed field goal attempt for the Raiders from 23 yards out, Jasper will start from the 20. Split backfield. Quickly going to the air, throws long, way overthrows Grant Teal though, but he did have the two defenders out there beaten, so tough break for the Cats. Yeah, he had him beaten. Uh, Justin, and he'll, he'll get timing down. He, hit, he can hit that pass, there's no doubt. Grant getting open is a big deal. Uh, he just needs to get a little more air under it and let Grant run to it. So it's worth a shot, that would have been a nice, nice way to come out of that goal line stand by getting a big long touchdown. So again, just many players for the Raiders going both ways, both O'Brien and Mundy out there recovering that play. Of course, we mentioned their names a number of times already offensively is on the ISO play up the middle, gains about a yard or two. Tate Blessinger with the carry. Tackle on the play by Preston Bolsmeyer. Yeah, as far as the Raiders, you see some of the numbers out there. Songer, number 62, it's on the offensive line. Number 56, Oxley, he goes both ways. You know, it's and nice, uh, I'm sorry, it's uh, nice to try that that pass, but whenever uh, you don't connect on that first down, then it puts you in a tough situation on second down, and third down if you don't gain much on the second. So here we are, third and long. So Gable from out of the shotgun, throws out in the flat. He's got a win hold, but a nice job defensively by Mooney to pick him up out of the flat there. So, you know, that's just one of those deals also blessed where it's kind of a one-on-one -on -one situation. And, you know, these guys are the Southridge Raiders are making some nice tackles. Yeah, that was a good good, good connection with Gable and uh, Wenholt and uh, just a good open field tackle by the Raiders and puts us in, uh, you know, fourth and just, just far enough away. We're going to have to think about what we want to do here. Going to wait for the quarter to end and then get the chance to think about what's going to happen. So Jasper leads this football game 6 to nothing with the Southridge Raiders after the end of the first quarter. You're watching the Wildcats and Raiders here on 18 WJTS. We put Kruger touchdown is the only score so far in this football game as we start the second quarter. Jasper with the football and set up to punt. Raiders actually have two men back. Grant Teal decides to punt, and boy, he punts it straight up in the air and out of bounds. So no return, obviously, on that play there. Yeah. See where the official is still backpedaling, but Southridge is going to have great field position. They're going to spot this at the 44-yard line. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think, you know, we always want to read it and see what happens, and the problem is Grant's right-footed, so you got to go to the short side of the field. There's not much room. Right. And then uh, that just sort of crowded him, I think, and he wasn't able to extend on the kick and just, just got a bad one off. So now it's up to the defense to see if they can uh, hold the Raiders again here. So the Raiders now with their third possession of the football game. They'll start at the 44-yard line in the Wildcat territory. Give us to Mundy, the second man through on the right side. Goes off tackle and... 
Cuts inside to about the 41-yard line. We'll give him a gain of about three on that play. Bless we were talking about during the break here. I mean, Southridge looks good throwing the football. We just had a couple drops there. So, you know, I think that's just uh, kind of one part of their offense the Wildcats going to have to start taking seriously. Yeah, and I'm sure they're going to got they got to keep working on it. You can't be one-dimensional uh, no matter how many misdirections. Well, that's actually a little change in direction right there. Is actually still not down. Is the quarterback, number seven, Federer, who was actually – Fake to the first man through, then they ran the option, and he just saw a seam right up the middle and was able to get a good chunk on that play, a gain of about 12 yards. Yeah, it was a pretty good play and good run because uh, the Cats didn't bring him down right away, and he just kept churning and got about five or six more yards. So that is now actually uh, five running backs have carried the football for the Raiders tonight. Certainly outgain the Wildcats rushing the ball, no doubt about it. Shank carries the football. The freshman gets to about the 27-yard line, gain of about three. So as kind of expected, as far as the Southridge football team, you know, again, you're just going to pretty well get a dose of just about everybody when you're talking about Mundy Eckert. Now you're seeing Shank becoming a big part of the offense and Fetter with a 12-yard carry a couple plays ago. It's time to the right side, and it seems to be working. They just keep working that right side, Bless. So obviously confident with their offensive guard, Songer, and tackle Gerber, number 64, as O'Brien carries it for about six. So third. Yeah, they, they seem to be uh, getting a little room, at least a, a push up over on that side. And, um, and now we're going to have to do something to get back in the backfield. You know, one yard to go here. If the Wildcats want to hold them on third and one, you got to get them in the backfield. There's just uh, If you meet them as they're moving forward, it's going to be a first down likely. Fetter, the quarterback, he gives it to Mundy. He's able to get away from one tackler. Engler wasn't able to bring him down. And it takes Kruger in the backfield to finally get him down, but not before he gets to the 15-yard line and a big gain there and a first down for the Raiders. So, again, the Raiders threatening to score against this Jazz Wildcat defense. Yeah, that was a nice... Uh, Nice carry. First and 10 from the 15 for the Southridge Raiders. Set up with the T backfield this time. Give us to O'Brien on the left side. He's able to gain a couple on the play. Not enough, uh, not much space there, but still a couple yards. and. You know, the Cats with all those guys in the box, they're still, the Raiders are still finding ways to break the seam and get into that second layer. Jay Sturkholz gets credit for that last tackle. Clock ticking, 8.29 to go here. Raiders with the jump pass up the middle. Nice job defensively to knock it away. Trying to see the number. I think that was Winhold who actually had a knockdown on that one. Yeah, number 80 uh, was the intended 82. receiver. 80 was the intended right. receiver. And really, uh, I think in that much traffic, just sort of got those alligator arms, wasn't able to extend and catch it. That Now the, the Raiders are challenged with the third and seven. Let's see if the Wildcats defense can uh, step up and make something happen here. So third down, eight yards to go for a first down. The Raiders can get it if they get to the five. Raiders moving the ball nicely, uh, you know, set up with a tilted field with the, uh, you know, starting inside the 50-yard line. So putting a lot of challenges on the defense here. Timeout, Southridge. Yeah, so actually Southridge calls timeout. They let the play clock run down. So we'll take a break in the action. 8.25 to go here. Second quarter. Jasper leads 6-0 over the Southridge Raiders. You're watching the Wildcats and Raiders here on 18 WJTS. 
food. The yummy frontier. Plays kind of inside the tackles, Bless, as far as their dives and isos and that type of thing. We've not seen many of their sweeps or buck sweeps or anything along those lines. So we'll see what they try to run here, but they actually run with the spread formation here on third and long. Yeah, trips right and uh, Jasper's calling timeout. I was going to say, actually, the official said that Southridge was calling the timeout, but nope, Jasper calls it this time. So he was pointing, we'll at, he was pointing at Coach Eckert. <laughs> right. Okay, okay, I see. All right, so we'll take another quick break in the action. 8.25 to go. You're watching the Wildcats and Raiders here on 18 WJTS. Southridge Raiders come out of their timeout, and they remain in a spread setup with trips to the far side and a single split wide receiver to our near side. Number 86, Christian Mudler on to our near side. Fetter throws across the middle and almost picked up. And look at that play. That was Tate Blessing. You're getting his hand right out there, Bless. He covered it really well. Yeah, he, uh, he jumped in there and got his hand up and knocked it down and almost uh, got a, a deflected interception there. It's good coverage by Tate. He really has improved in that over some things he's done over the summer. And uh, it just looked a lot better on that one. That was a, a nice play by him. So the Southridge Raiders not able to get in the end zone on their second time in the red zone tonight, but the kicker comes back out. So Jose Ariza will now attempt. It looks like they will set this at about the 20 yard line. So a 30 yard attempt, 31 will actually say. You know what they say, if you get your hands on it, you should catch it, right? Take touch that. Coach Rolletter used to tell us that, right? If we touch right. it, we gotta catch it. Yep. I'll be all over them later. Flag flies, so we'll see what this is all about. Delay a game, maybe? It is, so Southridge not able to get their team out there quick enough. Can make a little more challenging. It definitely makes things more challenging. We'll see if they still go for it. Obviously, a lot of confidence in Jose Ariza's ability. Ariza just a junior, 5'10", 172. Yeah, I'm sure he's got plenty of leg from here. It's a 36-yarder. He did uh, pull a little bit, but he's in the middle of the field this time. Here's the snap. The kick is up. It looks pretty good from here. Now, yeah, actually not. Missed it left. Obviously, our angle's not as good as the officials, and this time he's wide left. Last time was wide right. So the Southridge Raiders, you know, again, with great opportunity and really good spot on the football field, not able to come up with something there. So the Wildcats defense, like you're mentioning, bending a little bit, but not breaking so far. Yeah, and the, certainly uh, gave up a, a tilted field and uh, Southridge moved it pretty good. They just got, you know, it's like just one little incomplete pass and then a short running play and all of a sudden you're, then you're, uh, you're really stressed to, to make a big play and defense did a nice job, made some plays and now let's see what the Cats can do. Split backfield and actually Blessinger gets it on the left side there, but a good job by the Raiders to penetrate that backfield led by number 45, Chad Meyer, getting into the backfield to make the stop. Chase better, Ross Eckert, along with. Yeah, they, they not much room there and inside the tackle and uh, Tate tried to take it outside and they just strung it out and Took him down. That's a good first down defensive play by Southridge. Wildcats this time have twins to our near side. Open backfield. Gable wants to throw. He throws it out to the outside. And as Luke Wagner gets the catch and tries to cut up field, but not much there as the Raiders jump all over at number 54, Jack Mitchell on the play. So gets across the 25-yard line. We'll call it the 26, third and about five right now. It's uh, Luke Wagner's first varsity catch, I believe, and uh, you can see him got on the bar board and Justin deliver it. Cats with the same formation. They do have a tight end. That's Ben Sheeter on the opposite side over there. Actually, Blessinger now dots the eye. Gable, play action. He rolls out, tries to pull up. He's going to throw on the run here, but way short as he tried to hit Gossett over here at about the 45-yard line, but trying to throw on a run a little difficult for the quarterback, and that will force the Wildcats to punt again. 
So the Cats were able to take care, take advantage of an early turnover in this football game in the first quarter there, an interception by Wynn Holt, and the Cats were able to march it down with the short field and get the six points across. But since then, the Wildcats not moving much offensively right now. No, just not, not much going on. Not much. We're certainly not pushing them down the field and, and getting uh, any space for the backs. And Teal's going to throw it this time. It throws high. And a risky play there by the Wildcats. You know, again, when you had Nolan Aarons throwing that play last year, you know, obviously throwing to Alice on a number of times, but uh, yeah. it's the first time I've seen Teal throw a pass in a football game. So Yeah, and he, you know, he just missed it. Maybe gripped, gripped a little tight, and uh, it wobbled on a little bit, and he delivered it high, but he certainly had Gossett open. There was a big, big space there. Would have been a conversion of a first down if they could have connected. And, uh, you know, we're willing to, to take those risks and, and see what can happen. And um, in that case, we just didn't connect. So now we put a lot of stress on the defense again and see if they can, see if they can, uh, they can hold again. So big-time pressure on the Wildcat defense, as Bless mentioned. Raiders now give up the middle on the handoff. To Mundy actually took that handoff from O'Brien on the inside counter play. Nice job by Ben, ben uh, Cheater staying home there at the defensive end. He, he held his spot, you know, and that's whenever they do this mixed misdirection. It's all about guarding your zone, and that's, uh, you know, on defense, really, you're, you're playing a zone, waiting for someone to come into it, and uh, Ben did a nice job of waiting there for him and made a good tackle. Gain of two on the play. Second and eight from the 23, 604 on the clock. First or first half, actually. Pass out in the flat, a little bit too tall for the intended receiver, that being Mitchell Mundy. So that would keep the ball right there at the 23, third and eight. It's the defense putting them in a good spot here, third and seven. And uh, you know, the, the passing attack for the Raiders, they got I think I've got them for 10. 10 passing yards, two completions, and an interception. Uh, so just two of seven so far. A lot of that's really not the quarterback's fault, really. Some guys uh, should have made some catches, but see what they do here. Two wings set up there. He does complete that pass just right in front of Kruger. So number four, O'Brien hauls it in and gets across the it's right, well, actually right up to the 15-yard line, but that's plenty for the first down, so we'll call it a gain of about nine on that play. Raiders again, third time in this area inside the 20-yard line in this football game. First two times, not able to come up with any points. So with 5.41 to go here in this first half, another big opportunity. We'll see what this Wildcat defense is made of. We're really asking a lot of them right now. Yeah, we've put a lot of pressure on the defense, and they keep coming up with uh, stops. But Fetter keeps it this time. Nobody expected that. They actually had one of the backs jump up like it was a long, or a high snap, but Fetter goes off to the left side on a sweep and was able to get across the 10 to the 9-yard line. So nice play there by the Raiders, Bless. Yeah, a little uh, tomfoolery trying to trick him and deceive him. And had a nice first down pickup for seven yards. So ball rests at the nine yard line, second and three, 523 on the clock is actually the quarterback Federer ran out of bounds on that play. T backfield this time, it's given. Shank actually finds an opening off tackle there, cuts up field and gets across the five to about the three, maybe the two yard line. So a first and goal for the Raiders here. Yeah, nice little gap there that he, he found and uh, turned it up field and made something happen. So outstanding execution for the Southridge Raiders following number 56 and number 54 Mitchell on that left side of the offensive line. And the freshman running back showing some skill tonight. Again, really need some kind of, we've got to get in their backfield if we want him to stop. Mundy this time to the outside, but Tate's there in on the stop along with, I think that was Carson Englert, I believe. He'll get a stop for maybe no gain at best. 
So, so far so good for the Jazz for Wildcats is able to stop this Southridge Raider offense from getting in the end zone. But boy, with three more plays and three yards to go, it's gonna be tough. So second and goal from the three. Good job there by the Wildcat defense. Uh, you know, turning it in and plenty of guys there to tackle, but really the, the offense has got to take some of this pressure off the defense by gaining some yardage. Fetter wants to throw this time. He throws high and boy, almost a second interception for Winhold, I believe. Yeah, nice coverage by Ben and uh, the other guys were back there in coverage, did a nice job and Ben almost got his, his second, uh, second interception, which would have really, I mean, then it ends their drive. But nonetheless, a, a really nice play by the Cats defense. They read it well. So twice Southridge is trying to throw this deep into the territory. Tate Blessinger knocked one down. That time Winhold with a nice play, almost picks it off. So stops the clock at 4.06 to go here in the first half. Third and goal from the three. Raiders again from the tee back phone. Actually was able to get that. Oh, they say he was in, actually. Yeah, the quarterback, actually, it was great penetration. I think that might have been Hope that got to him, but he was able to get the pitch out to the tailback. Yeah, Nick Day came up and put a good lick on him, but, you know, whenever he hit him, uh, the running back, uh, I missed who it was, but was able to turn in and uh, fall across the goal line. I mean, it's, hey, that was a, he got just to the goal line. That's where he got, and uh, that's enough. And it's just too much pressure we're putting on the Cats defense right now. We've got to uh, move the ball a little better and, and not put them in such a bad spot, either by uh, not converting on fourth down, fake punts, or, or whatever. Extra point, the snap is up, the kick is good, and just like that, the Southridge Raiders have taken the lead over the Jasper Wildcats. They lead this football game with 4-1 to go here in the first half, 7-6. So we'll take a break in the action. You're watching the Wildcats and the Raiders here on 18 WJTS. Cats with 4.01 on the clock here. They lead this football game 7-6 to six after the Mitchell Mundy three-yard touchdown plunge. One thing, one thing we can gain from that as Wildcat fans is the, the Raiders have certainly earned those seven points. I mean, they've been down there a, a lot of times, and the defense have made them really uh, work hard to get what they've got. And, you know, it's a one-point game right now, so... A low line drive, so returnable football for Teal as he gets across the 20, 25 straight up the middle and loses his footing, but not before he gets across the 35-yard line with a dive there, and Wildcats will have the football at the 36-yard line. But, uh, yeah, you're exactly right, Bless. I mean, you know, the South Ridge Raiders had three huge opportunities, actually could be up this football game right now, 13 to six instead of seven to six, but uh, or even yeah. Really. I mean, they were down in, inside the 10 three, three times, scored once, so uh, let's see what the Cats can do here and see if we can take the lead back here before halftime. First and 10 for the Wildcats, high backfield. They give it to Sermer Syme up the middle. Sermer's first carry, it's a good, good five yard, four yard carry. Sermer signed the power back for the Jasper Wildcats. Had a nice week last week. Rushing the ball 18 times for 74 yards. Clock ticking, 3.30 left to go here in the first half. Gable under center, eye backfield. Cats going on a long count this time. Gives to Blessinger up the middle. He dances around. Finally was able to break away maybe for about two yards there as he was met right behind the line of scrimmage, but good move there to gain something out of nothing. Yeah, not much room there. Uh, not much room, but now we're third and short and we've just powered up in there and get our first down and keep moving the ball. So the Wildcats testing the Raider front line of Nikem White and Songer. Third and three, pitch out on the power. Good blocking to the left side, but Tate is tripped up in the backfield and yeah, not getting a very good spot from the other side there. Yeah, he just got across the 45 yard line, so it's just going to be inches here, fourth and inches. So actually they call a timeout to measure this, but uh, 
Yeah, we're kind of seeing, at least in these first three play, plays here, Bless, a little bit more of what the Wildcats were successfully executing last week against the Memorial Tigers in that second half to take control of that football game. Yeah, and, uh, and the Raiders are doing a nice job of not giving really much space to run and uh, making the Cats earn it. So here we are, fourth and short. Let's see what can happen. So they will start this clock. It's at 229 right now. Fourth and in inches for the Jasper Wildcats. Need a conversion here as the Raiders come up. And they give it to Sermersheim. He gets plenty for the first down. Game's about a yard, yard and a half or so. So that will stop the clock briefly here at 220. You got to figure Sermersheim's going to be able to pick this up, uh, you know, 12 inches if we need it. Nice run, good, good surge. And... Uh, but, you know, one thing the Southridge Raiders are doing is, you know, they're preparing. If we set up in the eye, those linebackers are up close, which really creates some space just behind them. If we can run some of those, uh, you know, little slants or, or something, I think there's, uh, there's, there's some space behind those guys as they play aggressive. Cats going long this time. Gable throws it out there. Gossett cannot bring it in, though. Nice job defensively by the Raiders to pick that up. Gossett had his man beat. But coming over to help out from a safety spot was Mundy. That was a good time to go after it. Hunter had him beat, and actually uh, I think it's Grant and him crossed. Grant had the middle of the field open as well. So second and 10, ball at the 47-yard line, 2.02 to go here in the first half. Jasper just shy of midfield. Gable, pitch out on the power, take quickly up the middle, but good job by the right side of that defensive line for the Raiders. There's just not much space there at all. Uh, the line's doing a nice job, and uh, the linebackers are powering up in there. So actually Mitchell, number 54, in on the stop. Actually playing a linebacker spot. So third and nine from the 48. Clock ticks, two or minute 26 to go. Gable again trying to throw a long ball, gets batted up in the air. It is picked off. Picking that pass off is number 80, Mitchell Carter. Number, or he's a sophomore, 6'2", 191. But right there on the spot as Gable took a pop as he was letting that football go, and he is actually down on the field right now. Actually, he's able to get himself up. He's walking off the field now, but yeah, it was just a situation there where it looked like the Cats were trying to do a quick hitter, but uh, Gable ended up having to back up a little bit more than what I think he intended to, just with a quick three-step drop. And then next thing you know, Raider defense was able to get in the backfield and knock that pass away for the interception. Yeah, it just got knocked straight up in the air, and it was a pretty, uh, pretty easy play to make the, the catch. Uh, we had Grant Teal in single coverage on this side, and I think they wanted to run a play that way, and it just took a little too long to develop. I mean, it's really an aggressive, very aggressive aggra uh, Raider defense up front. They're, they're uh, stopping us at the line of scrimmage on most runs and uh, got good pressure on the passing game. So from the 33-yard line inside Wildcat territory, the give is to Mundy on the right side. He's able to rush close to the 30-yard line. I think the Raiders only have one timeout remaining. No, they used at least two there in the first half. Clock is ticking. We're inside a minute right now. Southridge Raiders lead this football game 7-6. to six. Come up with the football with an interception made by Mitchell Carter. Mooney gets the football this time. He's going to lose... About four yards on that play as the Wildcats were able to get in the backfield there. Yeah, Brett Hof uh, got some penetration and drops him back for a nice five-yard loss, a four-yard loss. Brett Hof actually on that stop, so Southridge will call their final timeout with 27.5 to go here in the first half, so we'll take a break in the action. Raiders lead the Wildcats 7-6 to six here on 18 WJTS. 
Back once again here at Jerry Brewer Alumni Stadium. They made the Wildcats come back out on the football field, and they're actually running the clock, so apparently there was not a timeout call. I don't know why that would have stopped the clock anyway. So with 18 seconds to go, the Raiders with the football. Two wing backs, single back. Fetter's just going to throw it up long and throws it out of bounds over the outstretched arms of number four, O'Brien. So right now, bless, 10 seconds to go. Fourth and 12 now for the Raiders. We'll see. I guess they'll go for it at this point. Doesn't look like you're going to bring Ariza back out to try to attempt a long field goal. Yeah. I'm I would think they're probably going to kneel down and just go into halftime at, at seven to six and let it go with that. But Fetter. you never know. Yep. They could yeah. act like they're going to go down and. Better will operate under center again. Drops back to throw. Throws a quick hitter out there to O'Brien. He's able to get up to about the 26-yard line, but that's going to be well short of the first down, and Jasper calls a timeout now. With, or I, actually, no, that's actually to stop the clock to change possessions, my bad. Yeah, because that was fourth and 12 for the Raiders, so two seconds to go here in the half. Cats will have to at least take one snap to run this out. Gable looks like he's fine, so he's coming back out. like Victor Aleman, a, a guy that plays on both sides of the ball on the line for us. Who's, uh, I don't know if he's limping around a little bit or, or what. But I'm trying to see, uh, see Englert out there. Number 65, Brandon Yoakum. He's been starting to tackle. So, so it's first, first down for the Wildcats, right? Yeah. Yeah, so first and ten for the Cats. Two seconds to go here in the half. We'll see if they just take a knee. Looks like they are. Yeah, Gable's. Uh... So they got Gossett under center. So Southridge leads this football team or football game seven to six right now. They had three big opportunities. A very physical football team, and they are just really standing up to the test tonight. Yeah, they are, and uh, the second half, if they can come out with that same intensity, to, I mean, they're here to, to play. They're going to give it everything they've got. No one's going home on that bus uh, with anything left in the tank. You can count on that. So the Wildcats definitely have their, uh, you know, it's going to be a tough second half for the Wildcats to come back and overcome what the Raiders have done to them here in the first half. The momentum, certainly, it feels like Southridge really played a better first half. Mitchell Mundy actually led the Southridge Raiders with four tackles. Jack Mitchell had two and a half, and Preston Ballsmeyer with two himself. The Wildcats were led by Kruger's six tackles, along with Blessing, Blessinger also with six tackles as Wildcats field the kickoff, and there's actually a break to the outside. Still on his feet across midfield, across the 40, down to about the 35-yard line. I was Great trying to job. see who Tanner, it was. Tanner Egbert, he, he returned one for a touchdown last year as a sophomore. And he really found a nice little seam, moved around, and uh, weaved through there, and it's a really great start for the uh, – puts the just puts us in a great situation on offense to come out in the second half here with the – now we have the short field, and let's see if we can make something happen and take the lead here. Great job by Tanner Egbert there. So it looks like he may have stepped out of bounds at the 39-yard line, but regardless, it's great field position for the Wildcats to start off here in the second half. So Tanner Egbert, number two, the six foot one, 155 junior, gives the Wildcats a great spot here to start things off. Gable gives to Blessinger. Blessinger tries to get to the outside, but great job by Songer getting there in the backfield and was able to slow him up, and then others coming in on the stop for the Raiders. Include number 64, as Cole Gerber also in on the play. Yeah, they really, uh, I don't know what they did, but they blew by the offensive line and we're right back there to to blow that play up and now we're second and long here. Actually check that, that was actually number 54 in on the stop, it's Jack Mitchell, a linebacker. So the Wildcats again in the shotgun set up here, blessing her the lone back 
with Gable. Four wide receivers. Gable back to throw. Throws out here into the flat. Gossett's got it. And he's across the 35 to about the 34-yard line. Fetter in on the stop. Tackle on the play by Gates Fetter. Along with Brandon Oxley. So that will set up a third and five for the Jasper Wildcats. Gain of seven on the play after the two-yard loss on the run before. Third and five. Certainly in four-down territory here. Gable looks across the middle, throws it over, and it's picked off. So Gable with the second interception of the night. The other one was after he was hit, and the ball popped up in the air. But there is a flag on a play. They might be calling holding. Uh, I think it might. It's going to be on them. I think they bumped or held uh, Ben Wenhold as he was coming across on the pattern, which could have slowed him up, which is why uh, the ball got through. Got through. Uh, well, the bonus on this bless is actually it should be a 15-yard penalty from the. I don't know if it's from the spot or if you do it from the original line. I think it's from the original. Yep, that's where they're going. So a break for the Wildcats here which is what we need, you know, a little momentum shifter. And instead of them having a, the big turnover, now all of a sudden uh, we got the ball close to the 20-yard line, or at the 20-yard line. So scratch the interception by Mundy, and now the Wildcats in much better field position now at the 19-yard line, 15-yard pickup on the penalty. So again, four wide receivers. Blessinger gets it on the inside. Blessinger on the right side. He is brought down by the linebacker Oxley. Is he was only able to gain maybe two yards on the play to get it to the 17-yard line. Two-yard gain. Second down and eight. 10 minutes on the clock, just underway here in the second half. Southridge leads the Jasper Wildcats 7-6, to six, but the Wildcats on the move at the 17-yard line, second and eight. Sermersheim, the only back. Gable throws the bubble screen to the outside. Grant teal has got it in his hands. He's able to get across the 15, down to about maybe the 13-yard line, so he gained about four or so on the play. Really nice, uh, nice connection, and Grant made a little stutter step there to make the first guy miss and uh, get a good gain there of uh, about five, four or five yards. Five yard pick up on the pass play. Third down to three and 12. So the ball rests at the 12 yard line, gain of five on that play. Third and three. Sermersheim in the backfield, shotgun this time. They give it to Sermersheim, he plows forward. But boy, then he is just brought backwards. So again, that Southridge defense just really getting after it again. Really Linebacker solid. Mitchell, number 54, making the stop. Really solid defense by uh, the Wildcats or the Raiders. They're just uh, they're just not giving much up on that running game. So that's going to be now a fourth down situation for the Jasper Wildcats. About a yard and a half short. They need to get to the 10-yard line for that first down. We'll call it at the 11-yard line, fourth. And about a yard and a half. Blessing here in the backfield this time. They give it to Bless. He's straight up the middle. He sees a wide open spot and runs it in for the touchdown. So the Wildcats. And now there's a penalty flag on the field again. So Blessinger, and this is going to be against the Jasper Wildcats. Somebody obviously moved on the line or someplace there. So take the points off the board. And back five. So now the Wildcats, instead of six points on the board, are now facing a fourth and seven. We're going to go for a field goal here, it looks like. Trying to... So again, a tight football game. Southridge leads it seven to six. Southridge has attempted two field goals and missed them both. This is the Wildcats' first attempt. Cal's got plenty of leg here. Just uh, see if we can get it through the uprights. So from 33 yards out, he drills it straight ahead and puts it straight through. So the Jasper Wildcats on their first possession of the second half. A touchdown is negated by penalty, but the three points go up on the board with the Kruger 
33-yard field goal. So Jasper leads this football game 9-7 with 8.21 to go. You're watching the Wildcats and Raiders here on 18 WJTS. We all drew Ridge interception, then it also negated a Jasper Wildcat touchdown. Wildcats come up with three points, and they now lead this football game 9-7. As the Raiders await the kickoff from Kruger. Kruger booms this ball. That's going straight into the end zone. No return here. Deep in the end zone. Such an advantage to be able to do that. So let's see if the defense can uh, hold tight, get the ball back quickly, and... Uh, See if the Wildcats can extend the lead. Really a good start. They we moved the ball. Well, we started out in great field position, moved a little bit, and uh, you know saw a little better things, but still uh, ended up getting stalled on downs. But getting that lead is a is a big boost. So the Southridge Raiders will start first and ten from the 20-yard line. 8:21 on the clock. Of course, the Raiders. Very effective with their running game. 25 carries for 126 yards in the first half, but the Cats not allowing anything on that first play. It's both Englert and I think Victor were in on that play. You know, and that's the thing. I mean, defensively, we talked about what the Wildcats were able to do offensively in the second half to take control of that football game, but defensively did an outstanding job stopping that memorial passing attack. Obviously going to have to stop the Southridge Raider running attack this week. Yeah, that's a pretty good start with no gain. Fetter wants to throw this time, rolls to his left and underthrows his receiver, actually throws a little bit behind. A tight end. Meyer, the intended receiver there. So we put, put him in a good spot, third and long, and uh, let's see if the Cats can and come up with a, a play here on third down. You know, I gotta believe they're probably gonna be looking for something underneath on a little uh, screen pass, intermediate passing. Third down and 10. Ball remains at the 20 yard line. Better again gonna roll to his left. No flag on the play is actually the pass. Again, a little bit behind the receiver, but it looked like a catchable ball, but unable to come up with it is Tucker Shank, the freshman. I kind of like saying that, the freshman. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty impressive that he's out here playing uh, a really key role in a varsity football game. Right. I'm sure probably a few times in his life as a, I don't know how, 14, 15-year-old freshman, is that old they are? Yeah. Uh, it's been in this kind of intense environment. Right. It's actually uh, one player our freshman team doesn't have to worry about when we play the Raiders, Raiders this year. So the Southridge Raiders are forced to punt, fourth and ten. Snap a little bit high, but punter's able to handle it. Fair catch called there at midfield is Grant Teal. So the Cats again with really good field position to start things off. Oh, and there's a flag, a late flag, and this is, I think, going to go against the Southridge Raiders, the way they're reacting on that sideline over there. Uh, there's some activity with Tate and another guy. I don't know who uh, did what, but there's a... Yeah, there's Tate coming back to the huddle right now, so... So this would be a huge break for the Wildcats here. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the Raiders, so that's going to march 15 yards more for the Cats. Tate so has a way of uh, getting under some guy's skin sometimes, and the way he plays pretty aggressive, and looks like uh, the other guy got caught on that one. So, great opportunity for the Jasper Wildcats. They start their second possession here, the second half. They will start at the 34-yard line rather than the 49. So... Yeah, really great starting position again. And, uh, you know, in the first half, Southridge had the field position advantage. Now it's tilted the other way so far. So, so the pressure on the Raider defense right now. Gable is going to roll to his right, sets his feet, throws it out there, and just a little over the intended target. I believe that's Grant Teal there. Yeah, and he had some space in there, and uh, Gable tried to get it over the initial defender. and. Just couldn't quite connect. Stops the clock, 7.22 to go. Jasper leads this football game, 9-7 to seven here in the third quarter. Ball remains at the 34-yard line, second and 10. Wildcat offensive line. 
Snap's a little bit high, but Gable's able to get it to Blessinger. He breaks away from a couple of tacklers and gets across the 30 down to about the 27-yard line. Really nice run. The defender, Southridge defenders were pouring in from the backside. And Tate was able to get away from him and uh, find just a little bit of space. So a good job of that offensive line of Hope, McCune, Heichelbeck. Yoakum at that right tackle spot. And I'm trying to think, I think Victor's still out there at the left hawker spot. Wishbone. Don't normally see this at the 28-yard line, but a new formation for the Cats, which typically, and actually I think it was a bobbled snap there by Gable, and so he's forced to just rush straight up the middle, gains about two or three on the play. Yeah, I'm not sure if he bobbled it, but they, sometimes they try and work on a quick hitter like that, thinking that they're going to uh, pause. I don't know exactly what happened on that one, but... Uh, well, it nets two yards on the play, so now the Cats in a fourth down situation. Fourth and two from the 26. And now Cats are actually going to call a timeout in this situation. So we'll take a break in the action. The Wildcats lead the Raiders 9-7, to 6-08 to go here in the third. You're watching the Wildcats and Raiders here on 18 WJTS. Are you tired of paying those enormous energy bills each month? Geothermal users are saving thousands of dollars each year by switching systems. Maringer Plumbing and Heating has the best geothermal experts in the area and the latest technology to help you save. Geothermal systems exchange heat with the earth to give you the lowest energy cost possible. Call Maringer's Plumbing and Heating at 812-482-4425 and find out how much you can save by switching to a geothermal system today. Matt Scott's Big O Tires at 642 3rd Avenue here in Jasper is locally owned and managed. Skilled mechanics and technicians and guaranteed lowest tire prices and service. Matt Scott's Big O Tires in Jasper is a terrific tire and service center with terrific customers. Longtime manager Stan Betts represents the best in service and trust. Jasper is a terrific town and deserves a terrific tire and service center. It's Big O Tires, the team you trust. It's terrific. Fourth down and two. Jasper with the football, remains in the wishbone. And look at us go over the left side there. Give us the blessing or he cuts inside. Continues to surge forward and we'll see if he gets the necessary yardage. He needed about two, maybe two and a half. So we'll see where the spot is. Can't see where the uh, linesman is on the near side. Gable's indicating that it is a first down. Yeah, take that looks like just enough. They've not called the chain. Oh, here we go. Now they're going to measure it. Okay, so the chains are coming out. Still not much room to, to run there, so good job by the Southridge defense, but plenty of, that was at least a two footballs, right? So but that's the way uh, those yards are being earned tonight is, you know, a yard at a time. So Jasper remains with the football. 6.02 to go here in the third. They took a 9-7 lead with a 33-yard field goal by Kruger on their first possession here of the second half. Three wide receivers split with the tight end on the other side. Gable in the shotgun. Blessing her back here with him. Gabriel. And now he loses the football. It's on the ground, and it looks like Hope was able to jump on top of that football, but uh, Cat's obviously looking to throw in that situation. Gable mishandled the football, and luckily the alert senior lineman jumps all over it, but may have shooken himself up there. Yeah, I uh, hope he did a nice job of jumping on that ball that got loose. And Gable tried to step up through there, just didn't uh, control the ball, got loose from him. And Cats really got a big, good break here by uh, by falling on it. Now we're going back to the bone. So two-yard loss on the play, second and 12. Gable's going to throw out of the wishbone. Wide open receiver if he can hit him, and he does. That's Gossett who's got the football, takes it in for the 26-yard touchdown. 
So a nice play action play by the Wildcats there with the wishbone. I'd say 99% of the people in this crowd thought that they were going to run the football in that situation. Yeah, that uh, might be the, one of the few passing times out of that wishbone, and it's a good, good deception and nice execution. Justin put it right on the mark, and uh, Hunter pulled it in and took it in for the score. Well, again, typically the Wildcats will run the wishbone when they're inside the 10 on their goal line offense, but uh, actually doing it with a little bit more open field and a great play there by Gable to hit Gossett who was wide open for the score. So Jasper now with a 15 to seven lead. Cats are gonna run this option again. And it doesn't work again. Really have no idea, actually. He was saying, he was saying he threw a forward pass to Kruger there because actually what the Cats were trying to run there was a, was an option pass. He was gonna pitch to Kruger and they had two wide receivers out there. But again, you know, a little trickery, which, you know, that's all I'm going to say. So, yeah, so we're up by eight. If we go by nine, if you go up by nine, I, I, don't know, I don't know why you don't take the point. I mean, we got one of the best kickers in the state. I know we're, we're trying, to, trying to do and work things, but take the point, get up, uh, you know, above that eight-point spread so it's not a one-possession game. But, hey, if it works, we're probably cheering and jumping up and down, saying great play. Uh, you know, hey, it's still early in the year, trying to figure out if this is the way to go, what, what things, what kind of things we want to do. So, so Jasper leads a football game, 15 to seven, after the touchdown, and Kruger teed up, ready to go. This one is going to be short of the end zone, so the Raiders will get an opportunity. Mundy brings it up, gets it across the 20-yard line. Well, actually, it's that's been good. Tucker Shank, actually, number eight with the football, who carries the ball across the 22, about the 21-yard line. But, yeah, I see what you're saying, Bless, but, you know, just the bottom line is I just think you just got to get points up on the board, you know. Yeah, and we, I mean, we got a good kicker, so, you know, you can get one. And right now it would be, uh, well, obviously, he <laughs> booted that field goal. I mean, I think we've, we've attempted that at least four times in our first two football games here, and it's only worked once, so. But anyway, Jasper with an eight-point lead. They lead by a touchdown and a two-point conversion right now. 440 to go, 444 to go, and quick hitter up the middle. Gets the ball just shy of the 25-yard line. They'll spot it at the 24. Cross second ball carrier. Gain of three on the play. So the Wildcat offense with two possessions, two scores. And the Southridge Raiders now facing a second and seven from the 24. Pitch to the outside. O'Brien's got the football. He sees an opening on the power play and was able to get just right up to about the 35-yard line in the first down. The old uh, student body right or left. We'll call it a gain of 10 on the run. First and 10 for the Raiders, just shy of the 35-yard line. That yard gain on the play. First and 10 Raiders, just shy of the 35. Cat still with a six-man front. Gives the O'Brien again, this time on the right side. Not much there as the Wildcats are able to stuff him up there. Linebacker Tate came in there and stuffed it, and then some other guys came in and finished it up. That was a good... Good job by the linemen again. You know, their job is to hold everybody up, and then the line, uh, linebacker's got to make the play. And that was, you know, that's picture perfect there as, uh, as Tate stepped into the hole and cleaned it up after the linemen did their dirty work. And one other player who's going to have to go both ways tonight is Ben Sheeter, the tight end, playing that defensive end spot. I think actually Hunter McCune's out there, number 70, on yeah, I know Hunter's on some defense. So he's able to get the pass out there. And a quick toss out to O'Brien. Good job of the Wildcats to pick that up. Yeah, it went right between uh, Ben Sheeter's hands almost, it looked like. And from where we're at, it just almost looked like it uh, almost knocked it down. But. This time, actually, the Wildcats 
on a third and long, third and about six here. So the Wildcats with five men down. Bring back an extra defensive back. Went Holt in the safety spot. Kruger over here in a corner. Fetters trying to set up the screen right up the middle. Completes it. Trying to get to the outside. There's Eckert. So Tate was able to come up and keep him short of that first down, but it's going to be fourth and about a foot or so. Yeah, now it's uh, it's who's got the will for this one because we're going to really have to dive low and try and plug him, and then you got to worry about him trying to do something over the top. So big play here. It's a big momentum play for whoever whoever comes out on top on this one. It's going to be a big momentum shift. So a huge play here for the Raiders and the Wildcats. The Raiders oh. get the football. And actually, boy, I thought he got that football handed off, but great penetration by the Wildcat defense. I couldn't see who came up with the play ben, there, boy. Ben Sheeter came firing through there and just blew it up. Sorry, uh, yelled in your ear there. No, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> the big play. He came out of nowhere and just completely blew it up. I mean, that was just huge play by uh, Ben Shooter. Yeah, because he looked like he tried to get the football to Jonathan Messias, actually, uh, number three, but I don't think Federer was able to get that handoff to him. And, oh, actually, look who's come limping off yeah, the field is Harkey. That's her starting center. Yeah. You know, I think Hunter Gossett's in a quarterback. I'm not sure what the situation is with, uh, with Justin. They're just working – Hunter in or if there's something wrong, but Hunter Gossett's in a quarterback. So as you mentioned, this is a huge momentum shift for the Wildcats. Raiders not able to convert on fourth and one. Hunter Gossett's going to run the quarterback draw out of the shotgun and effectively runs it for about five yards on that play. Yeah, that's a nice play. So with Gossett going to the quarterback spot, that actually brings Egbert out to Gossett's wide receiver position. Ball at the 36. Winholt runs the play in. 18 seconds, plenty of time yet on the play clock. 105 to go here, clock ticking. We approach the end of the third quarter. Jasper leads 15 to seven right now. Gossett's got Cerny with him in the backfield. And a penalty flag flies, we mentioned that Time. You had plenty of time, but they just weren't paying attention. Again, sometimes that's what a new quarterback would do. But uh, Yeah, that really hurts because it negates the, uh, the first down gain. Puts us in a tough spot now. Right. Surprised actually uh, didn't get a timeout from the sideline. But regardless, clock now ticking again. 43 seconds to go. 19 on the play clock. Cats now facing a second and 11. Gossett from the gun. Gives it to Sermersheim. Right side, he's able to break away from a few guys and still on his feet. Nice run by Sermer there. As he carries the defensive lineman, number 70, wide about another three or four yards and gets real close to that first down marker. A gain of 10 on that run, Bless. Yeah, Sermer rumbling and uh, bumbling, had a little room and... Uh, you know, Summer just runs hard and he's a big, strong kid, so he drug a couple guys with him for a few extra yards, so it's a good start, but we gotta get that play in now. It's time to go, we gotta go. So that's actually gonna bring us to the end of the quarter here, and Jasper scores nine points here in the third quarter to take the lead 15 to seven over the South Ridge Raiders. You're watching the Wildcats and Raiders here on 18 WJTS. Have you heard all the barking about pedigree professional pet grooming? <laughs> After recent renovations, Pedigree now offers dog obedience classes and boarding for your beloved pet. Of course, as always, they have a team of experienced and competent staff members that will pamper your pet, large or small, with a first-class grooming service. Call 812-481-9015 to set up an appointment or visit them at the Y in Jasper. Where smart pets agree, Pedigree is a place to be because large or small, they now provide it all. 
Dairy Queen at the Y in Jasper has long been a staple in the community where friends and family come together. And now the coolest place to go is even cooler. Dairy Queen is proud to offer Orange Julius drinks. Try one of our over 40 new drink and smoothie combinations. From strawberry sensation to mango passion, you're sure to find something sweet and refreshing. We're also newly remodeled, so feel free to eat inside or take it to go. And of course, we still offer the best frozen treats around, including blizzards and ice cream cakes. Dairy Queen at the Y in Jasper, a tradition since the 1950s. You're watching 18 WJTS Jasper. Once again here at Jerry Brewer Alumni Stadium, the crowd getting all excited as Frankie Evencamp leads the all right, all right, all right cheer for the Wildcats. Cats with their first, oh, actually ball bounces away from Tate Blessinger. And it is recovered by the Southridge Raiders. So number 34, Ross Ecker comes up with that loose football. And so the Cats on their first play a on a third play. one. I don't know if it was uh, after change of possession. Raiders with the recovery. Actually, there's a Raider player down as well. Actually, when I saw that, I think it was the official throwing the hat of where the possession change of possession happened. Do you see a penalty flag out there? Well, I saw the guy, the, the line the guy back behind the linebackers uh, throw one in. No, it's Southridge football. I don't think. Yeah, I think it is Southridge football. Exchange never uh, wasn't a good exchange. I mean, not. I can see if it was never completed it. Yeah, I think he threw his baggy or something, you know, to basically oh, yeah. show where the change of possession was. But again, I cannot see which Southridge Raider is down. So I tell you what, he's starting to move a little bit there. So that's a good sign. Yeah, I think he's cramping. He got his leg up. It's uh, okay. I think it's a cramp issue. Oh, okay. Cannot see. The Officials right in front of me. There, yeah, I see where he's got his leg up. Okay. So the Southridge Raiders come up with a huge play there. And helping off the field is number 70, Joey White, six foot three senior. So hopefully it's just a cramp and he'll be okay and be able to get back into this football game. But Southridge takes over. A big momentum shift here for the Raiders and a huge opportunities. They trail just by a touchdown and a two-point conversion with 11.52 to go here. Just underway in the fourth quarter. Raiders with the football, but the Wildcat defense has done their job so far here in the second half. But there's a quick play for the Raiders as straight up the middle is number eight, Tucker Shank. So again, the freshman doing the job tonight as he's able to get that football all the way up to the 47-yard line and a huge play of 16 yards for the Raiders. And again, kind of that misdirection play that the Raiders like to... Yeah, the, the double handoff, and we had some guys that had a little penetration, but, you know, the key on that is you get too much upfield, and then they find the seam and bust it through it. So this time, Ecker gets the football. He gets close to midfield. Looks like they are going to spot it right there at the 50. So the Raiders looking to penetrate Wildcat territory. Be the first time here in the second half. It's just shy of the 50-yard line. So a gain of about three, we'll call it. So second and seven. Three-yard pickup on the run. Second down and seven at the 50. So the turnover has energized the Raiders at this particular point. And now there's a fumbled snap. Fetter's able to gather it in. He gets to about the 49, maybe 48 yard line. So he's actually gonna gain about two or three on this play. Yeah, was, uh, ball was bouncing around there a little bit. And Fetter nice, did a nice job of recapturing it. And could have been big play for the Cats, but now it's third and long. Let's see if the defense can hold them again here. Actually, just a gain of one on the play, so 
Third and six for the Southridge Raiders. Clock runs at 10-14 right now. Jasper leads the football game 15-7 over the Raiders. Raiders led at halftime and another fumble snap. So again, the Raiders did lose like their center point. earlier, Harkey, who went off the field. And the Cats Jasper come up with it. the football. Boone John is digging down in there in the middle and uh, he came up with it. He just had a great game last week uh, sitting down and clogging the hole up. And, you know, it's hard for us to recognize uh, what goes on, but there uh, Boone getting the fumble recovery on the exchange and doing a nice job. Defense, uh, once again, making something happen. Well, the Raiders who actually operating with a new center. Actually, I did not catch. He was uh, snapping the ball for... That's South right. Ridge on that possession. But, uh, you know, Harkey actually went off the field. Mason Harkey, uh, kind of the subject of a, a nice story in the Herald this past week where he and Carson Englert with his mother and Carson's father now under one roof and uh, South Ridge against Jasper tonight, but also uh, at home for the, for the Harkeys and also for the Englerts. But... Talk Whistles blow here. I think Wildcats call a timeout there. They did because uh, we weren't quite set up uh, with our receivers out there. Instead of getting the motion penalty, I think we tried to call a timeout, trying to get the right package and everything set up. You know, it's a big, big player. If we go down and drive it in and uh, get a score, uh, it can make for a, a tough comeback the way the Wildcat defense has been playing. So I think the Cats want to make sure they get it right here. All right, so we'll take a quick break in the action. Jasper leads this football game 15-7 over the South Ridge Raiders. You're watching Wildcats and Raiders here on 18 WJTS. Bridgestone is changing the game in tire performance. So will our neck when we get to the store when he's out of diapers. Well, to be clear, they're not for me. They're for my son. So. <laughs> we switched Will's tires to Bridgestone's revolutionary drive guard tires. Oh, those look sharp. It's okay. Our drive guard tires are engineered to take a puncture and drive up to 50 miles on a flat. So no danger, no side of the road. Well, that's good because we're going commando. What commando mean? Get quality Bridgestone tires at Dubois County Tire and Supply, 231 North in Jasper. Reflection, serving great food and servicing for 37 years. Dining room open 11 to 9, Monday through Saturday. Greg Oinker Songer offers affordable pricing for weddings, banquets, and conventions. Call 683-2611 on Highway 231 in Huntingburg. It's again here at Jerry Brewer Alumni Stadium. We mentioned at halftime there was a cross-country meet between the Jasper Wildcats and the South Ridge Raiders. The boys winner was Kale Killian, Kale Killian and Tara Cassidy won for the Jasper cross-country girls team so congratulations to those two as we're back to football action actually Gable in the quarterback spot he rolls to his right he's gonna throw long and he get it to Grant Teal and just cannot connect as Teal jumped up I think a little bit early for that pass there he actually stopped Justin, instead of continued on his route but uh, Justin had a uh, big pressure coming off the, the backside and did a good job of uh, Avoiding it and getting that pass off. I don't know if they came off the corner there. It looked like a defensive back or somebody came in just pretty much untouched, but avoided a, a sack there and got the ball off, just couldn't connect. So the incomplete pass with 9.46 to go. Second and 10, ball at the 49 yard line. Gable under center this time. And the wishbone and penalty flag flies. We, we jumped a little bit, just hitched a little bit over on the backside there. So a false start on the Jasper Wildcats, moves it back five. So that will spot it back at around the 45 yard line. I like to think of it as the 55, it's easier math. <laughs> All right, so if we get a touchdown play on this one, it's from 55 yards out. We'll remember that. If the Raiders come up with a play, it could be a pick from anywhere, I guess, but give us to the first man through. That's the fullback, I believe, Sermersheim. He's able to get back beyond midfield, down 49-yard line, game good, of six. Good carry on Sermersheim to get uh, six yards and get the penalty back. 
So now the Wildcats facing a third and long situation. Third and nine, 9.23 on the clock. They lead this football game 15 to seven over the Southridge Raiders. And we're on our side of the field, which uh, you know gives us a little more chance to think about a four down territory, depending on how close we get. And what we might want to do here. Single back, shotgun. Wildcats four receivers with trips to our side here. Gable's going to roll to his left. Blessinger picks up the defender. Now it's one-on-one -on -one with Teal. Cuts inside. Nice play by the receiver. And a nice throw by the quarterback, Justin Gable, as Teal is able to haul that in for a huge pass play for the Cats. All the way down to the 11 yard line. So they brought that, that blitzer off the back side again and they were able to pick it up and Justin made an adjustment, threw it to the inside and Grant just went and got it and made a nice, nice grab there. Put us here at the 11 yard line. So we'll call it about a 39 yard play, 38 yard play. Ball now at the 11, first and 10, Gable. Bobbles that snap, so both quarterbacks have an exchange problems here. Yeah, I think that one he got sooner than he was expecting, and I hate to lose him, uh, see him waste those. Does result in a positive play for about two and a half, maybe three yards. Gets it inside the 10 to the nine yard line. We'll call it second and eight from there. Cats should look to try to milk as much time as they possibly can. Touchdown will make it a two-score game. Touchdown or a field goal will make it a two-score game. Grant Teal, the lone receiver, split out to the right side. Double tight ends. Cats can't still get a first down. That's how the wishbone. There goes Tate Blessinger. He cuts inside and gets real close to that goal line. Cats can get a first down. Blessinger takes it to the two for a game of seven. So he's just shy of the... First down marker, gain of about seven on that play. So we'll call earning, earning the yards tonight. The uh, Southwest defense certainly made the running game not, not an easy thing for the Wildcats. Third and one. Gable. And boy, he has met quickly back into the football game as White, number 70. And he just plowed into Tate Blessinger. Also Eckert, number 34, coming up from a long linebacker spot. So that's a loss of one. So now the Cats facing a fourth and a long two. Maybe three, fourth and three. Loss of about two on that play as it's moved back to about the four yard line. Again, the Cats can still get a first down. It looks like they are going to run the clock down and call a timeout here. So we'll take a break in the action. The Wildcats knocking on the door, but it is fourth down when we come back. So Jasper 15, Southridge 7. You're watching the Wildcats and Raiders here on 18 WJTS. For quality workmanship at reasonable prices, call Best for Less Painting Services, interior and exterior. Doug Schmidt and his crew offered guarantee results. Call 482-9653 for Best for Less Painting Services. Go Cats! Brian Ruxer knows choosing who to trust with your hard-earned money is a decision you can't take lightly. That's why he treats all his clients like family. As a local and independent agent, you'll be able to look Ryan in the eyes and know he has your best interest at heart by giving financial advice that's best for you and your family. Give Ryan Ruxer a call today at 812-634-2000. Again, that number is 812-634-2000. And see why many in the Jasper area trust him with their future. So Jasper calls the timeout, decides to kick the field goal. Should be a chip shot. The only thing, it's from the left hash. It's going to be a 21-yard attempt for Kruger. Here's the snap. Kick is up, and Kruger drills it. Absolutely drilled that one, Bless. So a nice kick by number 36. Yeah, really nice kick. Good and high and hard through the middle. So Jasper extends their lead now to 11. It's a two-score game for the Southridge Raiders to get back into this football game. We'll find out when we come back. Jasper 18, Southridge 7. You're watching Wildcats here on 18 WJTS. Food, the yummy frontier. 
These are the voyages of Sonny's at Circle A Food Mart. It's continuing mission to explore interesting new food, to seek out new tastes and new flavor profiles, to boldly go where no gas station food has gone before. Sonny's Grilled Chicken Subs, made with fresh, not frozen chicken tenders. Comes in grilled chicken cordon, grilled chicken bacon ranch, and Southwest Grilled Chicken. Sonny's Food, out of this world. This is Tony Ubalar inviting you to the final days of our huge 86th anniversary tent sale and cookout this Friday and Saturday at our Ubalar Toyota location on Highway 231 South in Jasper. Our entire inventory of Chevys, Cadillacs, Toyotas, Scion, and pre-owned vehicles are still at this location, and they're all priced to save you money. Enjoy food, snacks, and drinks from 11 to 1 and register to win a free flat-screen TV this Friday and Saturday only at Ubalar Toyota Scion, Highway 231 South in Jasper. Don't miss it. Kerger set to kick off to the Southridge Raiders and an 18-7 lead for Jasper with 6.25 to go, and he drills this one, no return. So it goes straight to the end zone. Southridge will start from the 20-yard line. So right now, bless, the defense just has to continue to do their job. They've been outstanding here in the second half for the most part. Yeah, they have. Uh, not giving up very many first downs and just really contained the Southridge offense. Really, I think the defense has done just a good job all night long considering the position they've been put in. So, you know, offense uh, certainly haven't uh, been stellar, but we've been good enough. And big play on that last one was a nice play by Grant Teal making a big catch, making an adjustment on the route, and uh, getting us down close so we can get a field goal there. O'Brien sees an opening to the left side as he's able to gain Necessary yardage for a first down. A flag flies over there, so we'll see the way the Raider bench is reacting. It looks like it will be against Jasper. So O'Brien picks up 11 on that run, and there's a face mask actually for the Cats, so that's going to be big. Yeah, that was a nice play, and then you add on the, the face mask penalty, so it's a big game. They only call it five yards, though, so five-yard penalty. We'll move it to the 35-yard line, 36-yard line, actually. So 11-yard pickup, five yards on the penalty, 16 yards for the Raiders at the 36. Raiders spread it out, but again, a tough exchange there for the quarterback to handle that snap so the Cats take advantage of it and knock Federer back about three or four yards. Yeah, it's a big break for the Cats. They, you know, it scoots across the ground and then uh, that just disrupts everything. And the Cats were able to get back there. And so Wildcat line rotation continues as Hove comes out. Hayden McCune just checked in. Also bring in an extra linebacker, second and, we'll call it second and 10. Shotgun, low snap again, but Fetter's able to handle it. Rolls out there. Cats pick it up. Actually, reception's made by number 45, Chad Meyer. Day's able to slow him up, though. But not before he gains about six or seven on the play. We'll call it six, eh, seven yards, we'll call it. So third down and three. Englert and Heichelbeck in the backfield there. Actually, here's running play sweep to the left side. Gains about 13 on that play, so a huge play for the Raiders. As they're marching down the field, Mundy, I believe, carried the football there. He comes off as his helmet came off on the play, so he's going to have to come out of the game. But a huge run for the Raiders now back in Wildcat territory. Yeah, they, they spread it out a little bit. Uh, Got the uh, got the defense extended out there, and then he found a gap and made a nice first down run. Ball's on the ground so again, again, another tough exchange between the quarterback and, and the ball's still on the ground. They have not indicated. Yeah, I think they're going to call him down. Really, uh, the Jasper player came firing in there to try and make something happen. And he hit the guy when he's on the ground. They could have. Easily been called for a penalty there, but looks like a no call. And 
you hate to penalize a guy for being that aggressive when the ball's on the ground, but uh, Nick Day might have been better off just running up and touching him. But good to see him be aggressive. So it's a loss of 10 on the play. They've had quite a few uh, problems with their snaps here. That's really been the only thing that's gone wrong for them in this, this series of downs. Fetter this time throws out to his tight end. Number 45, Meyer with the grab there. He's able to get 10 yards back on the play. So that will set it right back into Wildcat territory at the 45 yard line. Third down and 10 for the Raiders. Clock is ticking though, 329 on the clock. Jasper with an 11 point lead, 18 to seven over the Southridge Raiders. Cats have won the last six matchups between these two teams. It's been since 2008 since Southridge has defeated the Wildcats. There's a pass and he had a wide open receiver. That was Mundy, but Federer just a little bit too long on the pass. So a big break for the Wildcats secondary there, Bless. Yeah, he found some space there. They just couldn't connect, but certainly had, had a guy open. It's fourth and long, so see if the Cats can step up. There's number 25 out there playing linebacker. It's uh, Matthew Britzman uh, sporting a different number tonight, but I can tell it's him by his, the, way he's, uh, the way he moves around. So the Raiders, kind of a do or die situation here and they actually, call coaching timeout. staff calls a timeout over there so they're gonna have to talk about it. And we'll take a break in the action. 3.13 to go here in the fourth quarter. Jasper with an 11 point lead, 18 to seven over the Raiders. You're watching the Wildcats and Raiders here on 18 WJTS. TV 18, local people watching local people. WJTS CD, Jasper, Indiana. And he said, someday I hope you get the chance to live like you were dying. Well, it's a girl's night out. Honey, there ain't no doubt. Make you love me, but I always dreamed about living in your radio. How do you like me now? Man, I feel like a woman. Your choice for country is 101 Country, WBDC. Matt Scott's Big O Tires at 642 3rd Avenue here in Jasper is locally owned and managed. Skilled mechanics and technicians and guaranteed lowest tire prices and service. Matt Scott's Big O Tires in Jasper is a terrific tire and service center with terrific customers. Longtime manager Stan Betts represents the best in service and trust. Jasper is a terrific town and deserves a terrific tire and service center. It's Big O Tires, the team you trust. It's terrific. Southridge pretty well facing their last chance right now with the ball spotted at the 45, just inside the 45. Fourth and about 10, we'll call it. Fetter sets up the throw, throws long. Defender right there on the play is able to knock it up and away. There's Kruger. Kruger yep. With good coverage there and put it away. Good job. So he's not able to connect with O'Brien over there. Nice job defensively by the Wildcats, and the Wildcats will take over on downs with 3.09 to go. 11-point lead, 18-7. to So obviously right here, the Cats just wanting to run clock and get over this football game. You know, we were talking about... Package looks like we're going to go with the wishbone, just try and run it a few times. Just go, go off and uh, take this one home. Gable, when he runs out to the huddle, seems to be favoring his left arm, maybe his elbow or something. So maybe that's the reason why we saw Gossett for a few plays there is they give it to Simmersheim on a quick play up the middle. Simmersheim on the carry. Clock ticks with 255, 254. Four four-yard game on the play, second down and six. So the ball rests right at the 49-yard line. Six, uh, second and six right now. Down to 2.35 on the clock. 17 seconds on the 
game clock. Play clock, I'm sorry. I'm sure they're trying to use as much of it as they can. Second and six at the 49. Wishbone set up for the Cats. They snap it with two seconds to go on the play clock. Blessinger on the left side. Blessinger on the carry. Tough yards for Tate tonight. Yeah, just not, a, not finding much room to go. Jack Mitchell, the linebacker, making the play for the Raiders. One fifty-four to go. Third down and five. Right at midfield for the Jasper Wildcats. Pitch out. Blessinger tries the sweep. And again, Raiders able to get into that backfield. He actually may have lose, lost a yard on that play. So Mitchell's still getting after it for the Raiders. Doing a nice job of stopping that. But boy, he's actually holding his arm over there. So... Hopefully it's not costly for the Raiders, but he he's staying on the field. Now, actually, I think we're going to have to bring him off. So a timeout on the football field. Jasper with the football will be facing a fourth and six when we come back. They lead this football game 18 to seven over the Raiders. You're watching the Wildcats and Raiders here on 18 WJTS. They'll punt the football, I think. Yeah, I think they should, <laughs> but uh, you never know. Fourth and six. Teal runs to his right, gets the punt off. A nice punt nice this kick. time. Actually, no return. The Cats can get down there and stop that football, and they will. So, outstanding job there. So, good execution on the punt play. All the way down to the six-yard line. So, Southridge with 112 to go, trailing by 11. Southridge, you know, they're going to have to try and make something happen here. and It's, it's a dangerous situation for them because... Uh, that's when things happen where turnovers happen and uh, the defense could end up with a score here if, if, uh, if they're not careful. Southridge will go back into the huddle here. So barring any drastic situation, from the Wildcats' standpoint, Cats should go to 2-0. and Southridge will drop to 1-1. and Again, it's been since 2008 since the Southridge Raiders had defeated the Jasper Wildcats. This would be the seventh straight win for the Wildcats in the battle for the goal post. We're inside a minute to go, and it's like Southridge is just going to... And actually, Fetter's calling his play out there, so... Better just shy of the end zone, throws out there in the flat, and there's a breakaway for the Raiders. It's cross midfield. Kruger's able to bring him down, but the receiver is Matt Treader, the big play, and then a penalty flag on top of it. So, out of nowhere, Bless, I just said it was a drastic situation that might happen, and uh, that's pretty close to it right there. Yeah, that was uh, in a little slam, slam play and found a, a gap. And penalty's tough. I mean, Kyle was running him down, got to him, and then tackled him. But I guess got to him as he was at the. Uh... So this changes things. 15 more yards tacked on. So a huge play for the Southridge Raiders with no give up on that sideline. So an outstanding hookup between the quarterback, Federer, to his wide receiver, Treader, and now the Southridge Raiders have a little bit of life left with 32 seconds to go, trailing by 11, a touchdown and two-point conversion, and then the possibilities are still there. They've got a kicker who's got the boot. Step one is going to have to be scoring a touchdown. Now pressure on the quarterback, but they do get it out to Mundy. Mundy's able to dive across the 15 and brought down to about the 12-yard uh, line, I believe. It was a nice, nice job because he almost lost it and then uh, was able to get it out to, uh, I think, Mundy and uh, to make a play and stop the, 
up to first clock in the 15 because of the first down. So Fetter will clock it. 20.7 seconds to go in this football game. Unless the Southridge Raiders can score, get a two-point conversion, and somehow miraculously come up with a field goal. So I have to kind of eat my words, and I'm sure anybody that's listening to this broadcast is saying, hey, maybe I spoke a little too <laughs> soon when I said the Wildcats would go to 2-0. and But uh, yeah, right now the Raiders thinking otherwise. That field goal was big, and yeah, the intensity of it, it's good to uh, throw out to the flat there. Mundy's going to find the end zone and get in. So now Southridge has done their part to at least score the touchdown here with 14.9 seconds to go. And if they get the two-point conversion, then obviously we'll be lining up for an onside kick on the kickoff. So step one for the Raiders doing their job, getting the touchdown. That was a nice play. They ran him out into the flat up. They took the, the guys into the end zone and just uh, get Mitchell Mundy out there with some room. And Raiders pop pass over the top, and that falls incomplete. He was trying to hit the tight end wire. I'm sorry, Meyer, Chad Meyer. So the two-point conversion pretty well seals it for the Jasper Wildcats at this point, 14.9 to go. Unless they can recover an onside kick and... Yeah, then you're looking fire. at a potential win if they could uh, score, you know, on a Hail Mary or something like that. So the Wildcats are going to have to come up with this two-point conversion. I'm sorry, with this uh, possession on the, uh, on the onside kick. It's like they got their hands team going in out there. That, the thing that worries me a little bit about what they're doing here, these guys all have good hands, but uh, most of them have clean jerseys. Right. And, you know, it's a pretty tense situation to be into, so need somebody to step up and make the play. Of course, Bless and you and I are both uh, members of the class of 1985. We're celebrating our 30th class reunion this weekend, and uh, Going back 30 years or so when talking about, uh, I remember a game against Princeton that came down to what we're bringing. Oh, look at this. They're trying to catch the Wildcats off guard, but very alertly coming up with the football is Kruger. He read it the whole way. And I was saying against the Princeton team that kind of a rare situation where they gave us a football game. You know, they uh, we brought our so-called hands team, and uh, maybe I shouldn't have been out there because the ball popped off my face mask and they recovered, but uh, our defense was able to hold. But uh, good job by Kruger to pick up that onside kick attempt. Nice job by the Raiders, actually, to try to throw the Wildcats off by just coming out of the huddle and booting it. Well, that was the single mistake that year for you, right? <laughs> Absolutely not. So Gable will take a knee there. That will... Wind the clock down to end this football game. So, a football game that the Jasper Wildcats jumped out ahead with a 6-0 lead. The Raiders took a lead late in the first half. They're going to halftime up 7-6, but then the Wildcats kind of took control there in the third and fourth quarters before a late touchdown by the Raiders, but were able to finish this football game off 18-13. So, less as we wrap things up here, what are your initial thoughts on... Uh, how this game played out. Well, we we got some things to work on. There's no doubt about that. I think the defense generally did a good job the whole game. Gave up, a, you know, a quick score here at the end uh, on some big plays, and th that's got to stop it. We're going to have to figure something out on the offense, you know, get, get some uh, momentum going, and there just really wasn't any room to run the ball. And uh, without that, it puts a lot of pressure on the passing game. So we got some work to do. You still got a lot of guys that played hard, and uh, you know Southridge brought it, that's for sure, and they really played an outstanding game, uh, and just just bottled us up and uh, made us look like uh, we're not a running football team. So we're gonna have to figure out how to do that, and we're gonna have to figure out how to do some 
some passing. You know, it's, it's early. There's a lot, a uh, lot of time to to work on things. So, you know, I think you take the win, you move on, and uh, you know, we still got the goalpost trophy sitting at the Jasper High School, and uh, just try and learn from it and get better from it. One well, Ridge, obviously, you know, really kind of laying it to the Wildcats. You know, forcing our our issues, I think, offensively with, uh, you know, their sound defense. I mean, their defensive line did an outstanding job all night and just really made it tough to open up some big holes for the Wildcat rushing attack. But, uh, you know, I, I think, um, you know, we're going to see a lot more physical football throughout the season. I mean, Heritage Hills is going to give it to the Wildcats. I mean, you know, Mount Carmel's always physical when we play them. You know, even Boonville next week, you know, uh, they're good. they got a new coaching staff and a new style of play and all that. So, uh, you know, this is just going to be a, a team that's going to have to control the line of scrimmage and uh, just just outbeat their, uh, their opponents, uh, you know, right there at the line. Yeah, and uh, Southridge certainly... I wouldn't say totally won the battle in the in the trenches, because you know we come out with a win and the defense did a good job, but uh, certainly had some challenges as we tried to move the ball offensively. And I'm sure we'll go to work on that right yeah. away on Monday. And this Southridge football team, you know, again, this uh, you know every year, um, you know they give the Wildcats a football game. Uh, this is uh, no exception this year. Really had the Wildcats on the ropes for a while there, and. Uh, you know, this is going to be a Southridge football team that I think is really going to be, uh, you know, tough to beat throughout the season. Yeah, and I'd say they made uh, big strides. They had a good win last week and really played a nice game. So uh, certainly got a lot, you know, just showed a lot, certainly a lot of character, and it's a good challenge for them to play uh, a team like Jasper who, you know, is going to be physical and it's going to play hard, it, and it's just a nice rivalry and a great night for football. Just a good crowd here. It's always a lot of fun to, to have the Southridge Jasper game. Well, Southridge actually outgained the Jasper Wildcats by 122 yards, 299 yards on 62 plays against the Wildcats, 42 on 177. Uh, of that, the Wildcats had uh, 27 rushes for only 60 yards, so a, a different story than what we saw last week. Uh, Passing wise, 8 of 15 for 107 yards, so uh, a little bit better numbers as far as the passing game. Southridge, 39 carries for 175 yards and 124 yards passing. Their rushing was led by Mitchell Mundy with uh, 13 carries for 75 yards. Tucker Shank, the freshman, 7 carries for 37 yards. And, uh, and then, of course, their passing game, 11 of 23 for Gage Fetter for 124 yards. Um, Actually, of the passing numbers, Gable was 8 of 13, and then uh, Teal was over 2 in the passing department for the Wildcats. So, you know, again, just, uh, you know, it's kind of a night where the Wildcats kind of won by the skin of their teeth when you think about it, you know, because, uh, you know, I know that about 90-some of those yards really, I guess, came on that last drive there. But, uh, you know, again, just an, another tough night against the Southridge Raiders. Yeah. Yeah. Uh those 18 points were hard earned by Jasper, that's for sure. And uh, the same for the, the visiting Raiders. Um, just a go good hard fought high school football game. You know? All right, so we'll wrap it up here. Jasper wins this football game over the Raiders, 18 to 13. So for Mike Blessinger and Jeremy Marcos on the video, I'm Craig Schneider. This is Wildcat and Raider football here on 18 WJTS. Good night, everybody.